Hey champions, superstars and future game changers, it's Hong Lee here again and welcome to today's presentation where we're going to be discussing 9 steps to building a million dollar licensing lifestyle business even if you are starting from scratch. There will be a ton of gold nuggets and aha moments throughout today's presentation which will run for less than 90 minutes so feel free to go ahead and grab a pen and paper and just for the record, I'm not selling anything on this presentation. However, if you'd like to reach out to me after this presentation, I would certainly welcome that. But for now, let's focus on how I can best help you to become unstoppable. So let's go ahead and just take everything you've learned about business and literally flip it on its head. And how we're going to best do that is by me empowering you to learn the most underrated skill of the 21st century and at the same time tap into the $5 trillion industry, that's trillion with a T, according to the USPTO, and that is to be able to transform intellectual property into income generating assets. So how we're going to do this is by you, the connector, going out there and sourcing out breakthrough ideas in which you are able to present them to mid-size, the large companies who are looking to license or connect with people like you who are able to bring these breakthrough ideas to the table and license them in exchange for paying you royalties. Who on earth am I? So I was born and raised in Perth, Western Australia, but now I'm a global traveler. So I'm based majority of the time in Philippines, but I do travel to Singapore, Australia, United States constantly in order to connect with awesome entrepreneurs and people like yourself. So by trade, I'm a mechanical engineer to an entrepreneur since 2009 and throughout the whole process since then I've built and sold two companies, one of which was a mobile app business for six figures in 2012, second being a digital marketing agency with 40 staff in the Philippines of which I sold that for seven figures in 2014. Currently, I'm a business growth advisor, licensing strategist, deal maker, mentor, and I absolutely love going to entrepreneurial events, mastermind retreats, whatever it takes to be able to connect with other thought leaders and great, bright minds. And I'm primarily obsessed with helping entrepreneurs build dream businesses fast, not slow, because, you know, life is best lived when you can make strategic decisions at a much faster pace than most people, as opposed to going ahead and treating it as if it's a marathon. So here's a disclaimer, I'm not guaranteeing that you achieved any or similar results. However, let me share with you why I do what I do and why I get out of bed every morning and three winning case stories to go ahead and back this up. So first case story is by Brendan. So Brendan happened to close a $29,500 deal by repositioning his business to be much more niche focused. Instead of trying to aim for everyone to be your client, whereby nobody will be your client. So just know that also during today's presentation, I'm going to give you a key strategy to be able to actually determine a niche that you wish to commit and serve. And in addition to that, we're not going to be focusing on deals that are only about 29,500, but deals that are much larger than that. And you're going to really be blown away when I really do talk in terms of the size of those particular deals. Um, secondly is Gus. So Gus, I personally helped go from 5k per month to well over 20k per month and beyond. So that's about 300% net growth in less than four months. It's rapid growth is what I'm all about. And how we did this was pinpointing Gus's strengths and his hidden skill set that he was only operating at about 10 capacity, 10% capacity, but now it's operating at about 100% capacity. Third case story is Mark Kirk. So I personally helped Mark go from 17k a month to 60k per month in less than six months. So about 250% net growth. And now it's actually on about 200k per month plus since we last spoke. And how we did this through the most strategic approach was to be able to pinpoint Mark's leverage points and remove all the core constraints, all the core blockages that were getting in the way of both personal and business decisions. And from then on, we achieved astronomical growth. So here are the secrets I will teach you today. First one is that licensing is a completely different ball game to passive income. So I'm sure you most probably read one, three, five, ten, twenty, whatever have you books or courses about passive income, you know, being able to make money while you sleep. And while that's great, what you're really doing is you're relying on luck in the fact that your particular income stream will not dry up. Licensing is a bulletproof business model of doing this and connecting with the right players in order to earn, you know, giant sort of royalty checks, but to be able to do it while adding massive value so that your actual income streams don't dry up themselves. 
Second, is that in order to achieve real freedom in the 21st century, we need to establish the difference between wealth and income. So like my mentor Roger Hamilton says, is that wealth is what you have when all your money is taken away. So you must probably wondering, hang on a second, yeah, wealth is money, it's making lots of money, isn't it? That's semi-true, but the thing is, it's not really the underlying truth to it all. Wealth is really what you have when you are able to go ahead and create something from nothing. Income is a byproduct of doing that. So we just have to establish that really wealth is what you can create that will set you up for one, three, five, ten years or even for life. Income is what you have in the short term that happens to pay your bills, but it's not going to really help you build that lifelong legacy or asset in the near future. So you must probably worry, okay, well, how on earth do we create this wealth? We will do this through what I call the wealth trifecta, where there's three core components, and they'll be soon discussed, but it will absolutely blow you away because it's exactly what this licensing business model is based on. So we'll be able to build a real freedom business. I'm sure you've read you know, so many books out there that promise you three-click riches and all this sort of stuff, but you know, the only way to build a real freedom business is providing real tremendous value to the marketplace in a way that can leverage both you and digitize any types of systems or processes that we put behind you. And just imagine that you could work anywhere and live anywhere as a result of developing the skill sets that are mentioned throughout this presentation. And ultimately, you'll become a game changer by mastering the core skill of the 21st century, as I mentioned, being able to transform intellectual property into income generating assets. So why is this crazy different? The traditional way of doing business is go somewhat like this as you can see the image on the left right so let's say okay you need to get a list so within the list you need to segment the right types of buyers customers subscribers what have you you need to focus on deliverability you need to manage the list okay let's go ahead and get some sales in so we have to focus on copywriting pay-per-click ads how do we maximize conversions how do we do banner ads how do we do facebook ads then we have to manage strategic partnerships then there's legal and compliance then there's generating additional traffic and expert positioning and market analysis and all these things that the whole marketplace always tells us to do in order to build a business. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, is there any reason why you pretty much have been stagnating? This is why. This is essentially, if you've been trying to do all of this by yourself, that's the one reason why you may be reaching roadblocks or why you're not going ahead and building that online business or freedom business of your dreams. Here it is in one picture with all the descriptions right here. On the flip side is what I believe in the business model of licensing. So the difference with licensing is you don't have to do 99% of these things. In fact, licensing actually requires that you leverage three core exponential traits. One, you, it does not require for you to have your physical hands to dig for gold in order to go ahead and generate revenues. Secondly, it doesn't require your presence to always be there to show up in order to go ahead and make income. And thirdly, it has a multiplier effect by going ahead and leveraging multiple teams of income, not multiple streams of income, multiple teams of income who are doing the work for you day in, day out without you having to go ahead and actually be involved in the business. In other words, you'll be working on the business. So why now? You must probably wondering, okay, out of all the business models, all these great things coming about, you know, we can do drop shipping, we can do like Shopify stores, we can sell things online, we can become coaches, consultants, but why now? The reason why I would suggest now is because the game has changed. It's not as easy to be able to grow a coaching business as fast as it used to be five years ago. It's not as easy to be able to sell products online as it was five years ago because of you know rising traffic costs and the cost per acquisition eating up your profit margins etc so you're probably left wondering what the hell has happened and what is going on here you know i'm stuck here boom please help me and i'm glad you asked that because this is exactly what today's presentation is about just to go ahead and really set a bit of context the reason why licensing has become such a great business model and set up this whole wealth opportunity is because there are three significant shifts that have taken place first being open innovation so what open innovation refers to is that there are companies out there who are willing to go ahead and open up their doors the floodgates to be able to listen to other designers, product developers who have great ideas and to be able to license them in exchange for a royalty because it's much cheaper and strategic and agile to do that as opposed to just relying on this in-house R&D team because as Larry Ellison said, 
the world's smartest people most probably aren't working for your company. So let's say you have a company like Oracle, for instance, you know, you've got tens of thousands of employees, but however, wouldn't you like to be able to access or tap into the, the millions of designers out there worldwide who could possibly help you take your organization next level? Hence, the birth of open innovation. Second shift is what I call the power of one in relation to the rise of the freelance economy. So being able to redefine what we call the future of work, where work isn't about just going ahead and going to a modern day factory, which I call an office, and clocking in hours. It's really about doing meaningful work that produces freedom, that allows for you to live life on your own terms instead of listening to someone, aka some sort of crazy boss who doesn't really value who you are as a person. And as Seth Godin always says throughout his presentations, is that the connection economy has arrived. No longer do we go ahead and just rely on these big factories to produce products rapidly. No longer do we just rely on making money from, you know, little ebooks, information, whatever. It's really about the art and science behind knowing how to connect people and connect with others will make you an indispensable linchpin in today's economy. Thirdly, it's what I call the world of abundance. So as you can see on the left, I've got a slide that says Uber, the world's largest taxi company, owns no vehicles. Airbnb, the largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. Facebook, the most popular media provider, creates no content, etc. So you can see there's a trend happening going on here. And it's really in relation to disruptive technologies. But even more importantly than that, is that the consumer understands that access is much more important than ownership. So it's actually not about trying to own all the physical assets in order to build a great company. It's about what's intangible that brings tangible wealth. And as a result, the key underlying, I guess, skill to all of this is understanding that economies with speed is much greater than economies of scale. So it's not about trying to go ahead, reduce the cost of overhead so that you have greater profit margins. It's about moving quick and being able to do it at a pace where you can have rapid iteration, rapid feedback and make smart micro decisions that lead to an exponential result. Is this for you? You must probably wondering, okay, this all sounds great or sounds a little bit intense, but uh, I'm not sure it's for me. So let me ask you, are you frustrated with where you are financially in life? You know, do you feel like you're only operating at 10, 20 or 30 percent capacity? You could really be hitting 100 percent capacity if you just knew that one thing that would take you to that next level. Do you feel confused about what path to take? Are you pulled in all different directions? You know, one day, are you trying to learn how to do Google AdWords? Or next day, you're trying to do Facebook ads. Next day, you're doing a drop shipping store. Next day, you're doing some CPA affiliate marketing thing. Next day, you're doing some other, other sort of business model. Today's presentation bulk of it will get you focusing on the one next thing. They'll get you literally becoming indispensable in today's 21st century economy. And Without a doubt, I'll make sure that you can really, really knuckle in on what your strengths are. So are you feeling lonely because you don't get to do the things you want or see the people who matter most in your life? You know, you're constantly feeling like, man, I, I absolutely hate spending so much time behind the computer. I hate spending eight hours a day trying to build backlinks to my website to get it ranked on page one, one of Google. I'm tired of managing all these paid advertising campaigns. I'm tired of grinding, grinding away, feeling like I'm not getting anywhere then today's presentation is certainly for you. Are you feeling like you've got a lot of self-doubt? You're wondering, what the heck is wrong with me? Like, you know, I'm just as smart as all these people who are getting success, but why aren't I mimicking their types of results? Don't worry, we'll go ahead and really be able to address those issues and get you taken to that next level. And are you practically tired of all the hyped up courses out there that overpromise and underdeliver, leaving you way more frustrated and in depth than when you originally started? I only feel like you've just dug this rabbit hole and you have no idea to get out. Rest assured, I'm here to be able to help you unblock all these blockages and get you dominating your levels of energy and get you re-energizing yourself through the art and science of licensing. So let's make a deal. There's no get rich quick here. There's no do nothing, get paid, sit on the beach, you know, have a whole bunch of money fall from a tree. There's none of that today. And there's no MLM pyramid scheme love is here, please. If you suit any of these categories, just leave the webinar right now and just leave more of the headspace for other entrepreneurs, innovators and game changers to be able to go ahead and build great wealth. 
I'm sure you must be wondering how on earth did I discover this nine step system and here's how I discovered it. What happened was recently, a couple of months before I did this particular presentation, I had so many clients and business associates who reached out who just felt like they were trapped on a hamster wheel, like pretty much enclosed by their own level of business instead of being able to work on the business or constantly find themselves working in the business and losing that level of passion and energy within the business model that they once had when they initially started the company itself. And it got me to also reflect and I really began to feel their types of pain because I've been through it, you know, I know what it tastes like to be able to go ahead and have your down days as much as I know what how good it feels to have your good up days. I reflected back to 2013, which was when I had one of the biggest events that really hit my SEO consulting business. What happened was there was a big Google update. For a period of about six months, I was literally living on ramen noodles in order to be able to pay my staff of 40, 40 staff in the Philippines. But then eventually I was able to turn the business around, triple the revenues, and then sell the company for seven figures. But whether it was to do with luck, preparation, strategy, I'd say it was a combination of all. Next, shortly after that, you know, I started Amazon FBA businesses, which were doing well. But however, as with all things, Amazon happened to go ahead and ban me. And although my best friend, business partner, Eugene Chang, specializes in getting people back on to Amazon after being banned, with this type of business model, there are inherent risks that you have to take into account. However, they're not included in the field of licensing. You actually bypass these types of risks with the business model licensing. And recently, there was a complete Facebook change in relation to being able to target companies on the B2B type of route on Facebook. And that essentially killed about 50% of my Facebook ads consulting business. So as you can imagine, with these three big significant events that really hit my bottom line, it got me thinking that honestly, enough is enough. You know, am I focusing on building a business based on principles am I focus, or am I focused on building a business based on tactics? So as you can see, the key to really having a business that will be durable, that will last in one, three, five, ten years is to be able to build a business based on principles that solves a significant problem. So then I was left at crossroads. Option one, okay, do I just give up and say, okay, maybe I'll just stop aiming so big and just do something smaller or maybe do something everyone else is doing and stop trying to go ahead and aim so big or I've option two where I do whatever it takes I give myself ultimatum that if this doesn't work out it doesn't matter as long as I've tried and as you can imagine I chose option two to be able to crush it and help you and every other person who's listening to this presentation today to crush it moving forward and to change things about business that we never knew was possible after I decided I was going to crush it, I went back and asked myself, okay, what's that one book that really transformed my mindset, my way of thinking, and my approach to building a business, a freedom-based business, whereby I didn't have to trade time for money? Can you guess what book that was? The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. You know, I'm sure majority of each of you listening to this presentation has read the book. If you haven't, go ahead, get on Amazon, what have you. And it's one of the most important books that really created not only a different way of thinking but a complete movement and shift in what it really takes to be able to build a remarkable lifestyle working anywhere you want and within the four hour work week there's one small segment one small segment that was in relation to licensing and being able to license your big ideas to fortune 500 companies in exchange for royalties and the mass behind behind that was stephen key who I followed up with and researched about, who wrote the book, A One Simple Idea. And he goes through this process. It's a 10 step process. And in a nutshell, it's about how do you go ahead and iterate on existing products of big brands and then present them with your new design or new tweak that you have so that they can go ahead and be wowed and you license those ideas to them, rent those ideas to them in exchange for royalties. However, don't be overwhelmed. Today's presentation isn't about trying to get you to become some you know, creative genius or creative designer. It's actually about connecting with people who already have those great designs and sub-licensing them to these big companies. Then I went along and delved even further and found Ram Brenner, who's one of my mentors and just, yeah, a creative genius in terms of being able to turn intellectual property into income generating assets. So his philosophy is, 
There's no point trying to create another flywheel. Why not just plug into an existing flywheel, i.e. through licensing, in order to be able to generate momentum and then take a cut of the royalties on the back of that. After going ahead and reading voraciously through these three creative geniuses, well, pretty much household names, I was able to dissect everything. And immediately I asked myself the million dollar question, which is, if I lost everything today, what would be the most strategic approach to building a million dollar lifestyle business tomorrow without sacrificing long-term gain? Don't get me wrong, this is not an easy question to answer because it gets you thinking that anything is possible for starters, but also understanding that if you were to build something from nothing and be able to transform that into long-term wealth, how do you do that without focusing on these sort of short-term gains, short-term wins that everyone falls for? And to be able to do it in a way that I could duplicate it as a recipe and pass it on to someone like yourself. As I always believe, questions are the answers. So I sat on this and I sat on this question for a good week until immediately it clicked. And I had this aha moment. I just thought, yes, I think I'm onto something here. I can really go ahead and help change a lot of lives. And at the same time, change my life to be able to get myself stuck out of any sort of rut where I have to worry about any Facebook update, Google update, Amazon update, what have you. But to be able to build a bulletproof business that can really help a lot of people, bring a lot of value, but then also be able to do it in a very hands-off manner. So the recipe I'm about to share with you really is a combination of me dissecting Tim Ferriss's, Stephen Key and Ram Brenner's strategic insights and their geniuses to be able to put it in a nine step system, which I call the licensing lifestyle system. I just can't wait till we really get into the meat of things. But first, I just want you to let you know that even if you have no product, no existing customers, no email list, no social media following, no experience, no connections, no credibility, no sales or technical skills, or heck, even no business, you can still go ahead and kick ass in this licensing business model. Let's address the five licensing myths which I've fallen victim for, a lot of my associates have fallen victim for, and people who reached out to me recently have also fallen victim for. So myth one is that licensing is a legal process. Okay, so don't get it wrong. There's a lot of legalities involved in licensing. However, that doesn't mean that you need to be that expert attorney or expert lawyer to be able to address the legal side. The most important part you need to know about licensing is how on earth do you make money with it and repeat it over and over again in a predictable manner. Myth two is that licensing is too complicated. Okay, don't get it wrong, it was so easy, everybody be doing it, right? I'm going to share with you today the system that was able to help me smart cut the entire process. And what I mean by smart cut, not shortcut, because shortcuts really imply that you're skipping essential steps. Smart cut is all about lateral thinking. So we're going to smart cut the process by leveraging already proven intellectual property, so already proven awesome designs, inventions that are ready for licensing and going ahead and making money with it. Myth three is that licensing doesn't work for me. Okay, so how often have you heard someone say, okay, licensing doesn't work for me, business doesn't work for me, this doesn't work for me. At the end of the day, we need to go ahead and have the courage to step out of our own way and have the courage to move forward and understand that we are only as limited as our own imagination. And if we don't know something, we'll do what we do best and outsource the rest. Myth four, so licensing partners are hard to find. I can count numerous times in terms of how many associates tell me, okay, I've got this great invention, this great design, but it's so hard to find licensing partners. No one wants to license it. Rest assured, number one problem and myth that I'm addressing right now will be solved throughout my whole nine-step licensing lifestyle system. And I'll be able to teach you one of the most important outreach skills, which is to be able to connect with literally anyone. Myth five is that licensing requires you to become this certified fancy professional. A lot of the time when people hear anything that's technical, you know, legal related, expert related, they'll say, oh, I'm not good enough because, you know, I need all these credentials. I need to be an expert in that. I don't have time to spend eight years in law school. Okay. Here's the thing about knowing how to make true wealth in life is that by being a jack or jill of all trades, you can actually go ahead and grow the most remarkable companies and help the most people by going ahead and knowing how an integral amount of topics or industries can produce a common denominator. 
Like you cannot do that by being a specialist. If you focus only on being a cardiologist, okay, that's fine. But at the end of the day, if you want to be able to do multi-million dollar deals, that's not going to happen because you are too specialized. So here we're focusing on what it really takes to be able to oversee things holistically and understand that we can leverage people with this alphabet soup, with this list of credentials. And at the end of the day, your job is to go ahead and sell the soup in order to win. Here's a great quote by Tim Ferriss that I want to address, which is most people fail not because they lack the skills or aptitude to reach their goal, but simply because they don't believe they can reach it. Let's make a commitment, right? Is that I don't mind if you don't believe in your ability to be able to leverage this licensing model just yet. I understand that this may be new to you, may not be new to you, but just know one thing is that the fact that you have watched this presentation up to this point, I believe in your ability and capability in order to be able to create magic in the field of licensing. And as we go ahead and progress the presentation, it's going to become more and more believable as you see what's possible. Are you ready to go ahead and really delve into the licensing system? But first, before we really get into the nine steps, let's go ahead and understand a bit of licensing terminology and nomenclature. So you must probably wondering, what on earth is intellectual property anyway? So the fancy legal definition is that it encompasses creations of the mind, such as inventions, literary and artistic works, designs and symbols, names and images used in commerce. So what's the money-making Hong Lee definition? Intangible assets that hold underutilized and untapped monetary value. Moreover, what on earth is licensing them? So the fancy legal definition is an arrangement whereby a licensor grants a right to intangible property to another entity for a specific or specified period and in return the licensor receives a royalty fee from the licensee. So the money-making Hong Lee definition is that it encompasses the process of transforming intellectual property into income generating assets. Just while we're on the topic of licensor and licensee, when I refer to licensor, I'm actually talking about the inventors. So the party that grants the license or the party, pretty much the party that creates the actual intellectual property. Moreover, when I talk in terms of licensee, the licensee in this case will be big companies and they're the party that receives the license from the actual inventors and pays you a handsome royalty in exchange for that particular intellectual property license. Here's another snapshot again. So what we're doing is you as a connector, we're going ahead and leveraging breakthrough ideas, which we then present to big companies, license them to big companies in exchange for royalties. Here are the nine steps to the licensing lifestyle system. So step one is to choose a niche and commit. So we want to make sure that we serve this niche, we're serious about this niche, and we want to go ahead and become the best licensing strategist or deal maker within this field. Secondly, we want to identify potential companies who are open to open innovation uh, within the particular niche. Thirdly, we're going to connect with the potential companies and don't worry, I know you must probably don't to like, oh, well, you know, why would a big mid-sized or Fortune 500 company want to talk to me? Rest assured, I've got great templates that will bypass a lot of that. Step four is to be able to identify potential inventors. So the genius designers behind all of the great inventions that you'll be able to tap into their hard work in order to bring it back to the companies. So step five, connect with potential inventors. So I'll go ahead and share templates on how we're going to pretty much pitch them on a godfather irresistible offer. Step six is that once you've got an inventor or designer who's committed to being able to sub-license his or her particular invention or design to you, you'll send through a sub-licensing rep agreement. Step seven will then create a pitch deck which will be used as a strategic tool in Trojan Horse in com communicating and creating a licensing deal with the particular companies. Step eight is we want to qualify the potential companies. Look, at the end of the day, you don't want to just take on any single company that says yes. There needs to be a right company inventor slash designer fit. And then last step, step nine, is send the licensing agreement to the company and win the deal. First step is choose a niche and commit. The rich is in the niche, as all my American buddies always say. And in order to really determine which niche we need to focus on, we need to ask ourselves the most important question, which is who? So which niche do I care most about helping in order to solve a painful problem and may already be a consumer of? 
how you determine this is initially by looking at your household so what products do you have inside your house check your purchases your buying habits on your on your bank statements your income statements etc and check what email list you're also subscribed to that you generally get excited about that are products related consumer products related or even you get frustrated about because you believe that there could be a better way to solving things before we go approach any of these inventors and these companies you need to be able to master your pitch so that you set the playing field and you set the context for how serious you are about creating like successful licensing deals so here's two templates first one is i help niche companies leverage open innovation in order to achieve an unfair advantage or two i help niche companies transform breakthrough ideas into income generating assets so i'll give an example let's say you want to go ahead and dedicate yourself to the pet products industry first template would be i help pet products companies leverage open innovation in order to achieve an unfair advantage second be I help pet products companies transform breakthrough ideas into income generating assets. Just commit to being able to practice this at least three times a day minimum until it becomes literally second nature and the moment that any Tom, Dick and Harry across the street can go ahead and ask you what do you do, you will go ahead and respond back with your masterful pitch. Add it to your websites, social media profiles, email signatures, what have you, so that you can really not only commit to yourself that you want to go ahead and create these licensing deals, but you want to go ahead and commit to the marketplace, to the niche you serve, that you are willing to step up and change the game. Of course, there's personal branding involved because at the end of the day, you're the connector who's reaching out to these inventors, companies, etc. So you don't need to build like a full blown 10,000, 20,000 website. That's just a waste of money for what we're aiming for. You can just have a simple relevant domain. So you can do your ma your name .com, whatever URL you want to use. And then you can set up like a simple personal branding website through like wiseintro.co. And you, you can be set up essentially in 10 minutes. And in addition to that, you can optimize your current LinkedIn profile if it's not going to conflict with your current business, of course. But you can optimize your LinkedIn profile and all your other social media profiles to reflect the fact that you want to become a licensing strategist and deal maker for this particular niche. Second, so step two, we're going to go out and identify potential companies who are open to licensing ideas. In order to find your list of companies, right? So what I see a lot of people do wrong is they always want the most amount of, you know, companies list or list of companies possible. But the problem with that is if you get a list of 10,000, you'll go ahead and get overwhelmed. So let's focus on compiling and creating what I call your dream 100 list of companies first that we're going to approach. And then we can decide from there. And there are five best sources that I recommend. The first way is to be able to create, find, or go ahead and buy an existing list of your Dream 100 clients. It could be checking up on Inc. 5000, Fortune 1000 list. Um, just go ahead and have a look around for these sort of aggregators. Second is you can actually Google the niche list. So you can say pet products list, pet products associations, etc. Um, you can also go ahead and reach out to American Society of Association Executives and let them know, okay, these are the types of companies I want to reach out to, which association is best regulating or monitoring this particular industry. The third one is using LinkedIn, which I'm sure many of you who are listening to this presentation have a LinkedIn account. So it's through using LinkedIn Advanced Search, where there's Premium Sales Navigator. I'll talk about that um, very soon. Uh, fourthly, we can use data.world, which is an open source, pretty much a data mining company, which is absolutely awesome. It saved me thousands of dollars using this as opposed to having to pay virtual assistants or other directories. And the fifth way is to be able to go ahead and use an account at salesripe.com. So I don't go ahead and get paid for any reimbursement here. I'm just suggesting that they're awesome. They have a great product. So check it out. You can go ahead and get a certain amount of leads per month and they'll go ahead and really give you the direct numbers, the Twitter accounts, the email accounts, what have you. Then once you know the list of your Dream 100 companies, you need to know who the decision makers are. So how we find out who the decision makers are, uh, multiple ways. So first way being company organization charts, LinkedIn, as we've mentioned previously, Ad Data Express, and also Rolsey, which is a relationship capital platform. In relation to company organization charts, the official board.com is a great well-known service you can use. It will really tell you the hierarchical structure of the actual organization itself. 
Secondly, we can use wikiorgcharts.com. It's open source, so sort of be careful a little bit with this. Sometimes it's not reliable. However, it's better than nothing. Then we've got LinkedIn, so you can use LinkedIn Premium account. So Premium still allows you to search well, just um, at the end of the day. It's not as good as Sales Navigator, in my opinion. However, it's good enough. So if you already have a Premium account, rest assured, we can definitely go ahead and leverage that to the next level. We've got LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So this is awesome because with Sales Navigator, you can say, okay, here are my Dream 100 clients. And then you create a particular news feed focused on this Dream 100 so that you can really plug into the ecosystem and just become obsessed with what these companies are really looking for. So then you turn your LinkedIn profile, your LinkedIn account into marketing strategic intelligence tool as opposed to some sort of static social media profile. You can go ahead and search by keyword, current company, location, what have you. So the search functions are absolutely awesome on LinkedIn, but just know you can't just go ahead and get the email address or direct numbers straight off of, straight off this service. Like that really comes at the expense of you digging deeper, but at least it allows for you to do research and prepare in advance for any potential licensing deals. Then we've got Ad Data Express. Really, it's an advertising database of all the top executives of all these companies. If we ever look at going down that route, connected with advertising or marketing executives, this is a great resource. Then we've got RealC.com, which I absolutely love. This is one of the most hidden pieces of data mining databases in order to really understand that if you are going for someone who's really, really influential, you get a good idea of who is within the first, second and third degree networks so that you can build relationships up the chain. Why research decision makers? Why can't we just send out, you know, spammy emails and win these licensing deals without doing any work? Well, firstly, I don't want you to do no work. This takes work. And secondly, personalization equals differentiation. So the more personalized our emails are, our approach to marketing, our approach to presenting, the more likely we're going to be able to understand our potential clients on both sides of the deal. And the more likely we're going to be able to reach the income goals and the lifestyle business that we set out to create. So just take note of all the decision makers' contact details, their LinkedIn profile URL, their Twitter profile, their executive email contact, their direct line, because all of this is valid data in order to be able to advance when we do actually reach out to these particular decision makers. Then really get organized. Like, okay, I'm a dude who's 92% right brain, 80% left brain, and I cannot stress the fact that being organized matters a heck of a lot when you really want to go ahead and create long lasting strategic relationships. And in doing so, you can use Google Sheets, you can use Excel. I'm sure you're familiar with each of the two, but just get something going so that you're not all over the place. What we can also do is you can use something like Pipedrive, which is a little bit more, I guess, sexier looking in terms of optimizing the user experience uh, for tracking lead flow and so forth. It's not necessary, but it is recommended. Okay, so step three, how on earth do we connect with these potential companies, these awesome guys who will end up being able to actually send through a licensing agreement and pay you royalties in exchange for that? Before we send out any email, I'm going to be clear on this, is that I would suggest you have an email tracking solution so you know what works, what doesn't, who opens up your emails, who doesn't, because if you don't have this level of data, you're really just aiming in the dark. So there's two solutions I suggest. The first one being yeswear.com. So that's a favorite of mine. But a lot of my other associates also use bananatag.com, which is, yeah, just as functional for what we need right now. And both are quite affordable. You know, they're about $15 per month. So it's not really a stretch, but it, it will pay off thousands, even millions of dollars in dividends. Here's the breakthrough email when we go to tackle companies. So don't freak out. Here's a word for word template that you can use in order to get the conversations and engagement flowing. So the subject title would be appropriate person. Then the email body would be hi, first name. I'm not sure if I'm sending this to the right person, but can you tell me who is responsible for the open innovation or product management division of company name? If it's not you, who do you suggest I talk to? Thanks in advance for helping me out. So just to point out, we need to make sure we personalize this email to optimize the best level of deliverability so it actually reaches the inbox of the company we're targeting. Otherwise, if you send out spam emails, one, you can, you're going to kill your email deliverability, which means your emails won't even reach people's inboxes. It will actually go straight to spam. Personalization is the key to avoiding that. 
And we want to make sure we split test between whether it's open innovation, product management division, or you could even say the sales department. Next, so what we would do is once we get a referral from the person who responds back, let's say name of referrer is Nancy. So you'd say, Nancy, thank you as the subject title, of course. So then the email body would say, thanks for getting back to me and referring me to the appropriate person. I will connect with John. If we get traction, I will certainly keep you updated. Thanks again and put your signature there. Why don't we go ahead and send a thank you message to the person who referred us. So let's say with Nancy, the reason why we would go ahead and say thank you to Nancy is because we may need Nancy to actually go ahead and help us follow up in the near future. So let's say if John doesn't really send any email back to us, we can leverage Nancy in order to follow up, which makes our job a lot easier because then we don't seem like the pushy one. We actually seem like we're part of the team. Then you'll go ahead and contact John directly, who's the right person to talk to about, say, open innovation or product management. So the subject title will be via Nancy. So John, by way of introduction, Nancy said it made sense for us to talk about open innovation ideas for, let's say, IBM. Quick question, what ideas are you currently looking for? Question mark. Happy to help. Talk soon. So as you can see, this isn't the type of email marketing that's always taught or the email outreach that's always taught, which is, you know, put a whole big massive essay, try to go ahead and talk about your life story, about when your cat passed away or when, when your dog's birthday was. Nobody cares about that. People just want to know what's in it for me. So as you can see, this email template is short and sweet to the point and coming from a place where you're value centric. Next, once you get a response, of course, so once the person responds back and says, oh, yeah, you know, um, uh, we're looking for this type of idea. We want to go ahead and optimize our current household products or this, you know, there'll be a bit of brainstorm back and forth. Then you would say, John, thanks for the, your prompt response. I'm sure I can find a wide array of breakthrough ideas to support exactly what you need. Let me talk to my pool of inventors and top-notch designers, and I'll immediately contact you once I do. Sound good? And just have your name. So, as you can see, what we're doing here is we're acknowledging what they're looking for. We're telling them, look, let's go ahead and just give me some time. I'll come back with some awesome ideas. And you're keeping this conversation open by producing an open loop. So step four is how on earth do we identify potential inventors? So there's multiple array of sources and I'm going to give you an endless amount. So you can't give me any excuses that you can't find any great inventors or designers. And here are the sources themselves. So first is crowdfunding. So one earth is crowdfunding. Um, crowdfunding really, in essence, is the ability to be able to raise funding for a project in order to help you go ahead and manufacture or distribute that product in essence, get sales in advance from the crowd. So people vote with their wallets. They don't just vote with social media, likes, comments, whatever. They vote with their particular wallets to say, hey, I actually want this product. Let me know when it's ready. And the most popular crowdfunding site, of course, is kickstarter.com. So you can go there, check out the awesome technology gadgets, the designs, the groundbreaking sort of inventions. Like you can just have a look around. You can look on indiegogo.com as well for all things technology and also great artistic projects with brilliant designs. Then next is equity crowdfunding. So what's the difference between crowdfunding and equity crowdfunding? So majority of the time you find all the sites that are equity crowdfunding based are more established companies who are willing to go ahead and raise more money, but in exchange for equity in the company. So in essence, they're democratizing the traditional way of investing. One of the most popular equity crowdfunding sites is wefunder.com. So go ahead and check out the technology and technological gadgets there. Next is circleup.com, which has also raised, you know, at this point in time, more than 390 million worth of projects and equity. And what if I told you that NASA also made for a great source? So you must probably be wondering how on earth would NASA want to work with you? Here's how. What NASA have is a patents program where you can go ahead and actually license their patents and produce consumer technology products based around the actual technology. Or you can go ahead and sub-license their technology and pitch it to these big companies that we'll be talking about. So just know that nothing is ever out of reach. NASA is willing to go ahead and have you back in this as well. So yeah, definitely have a look around um, their particular site with the link below.
I've got to give credit to my good friend Alan about this idea as well, is that you can look at the reality inventor shows. So Shark Tank, Dragon's Den, just pay attention to a lot of the inventors who have a great invention, but where they really are stuck is the distribution idea and being able to actually get their product and design into more hands, more pockets, and generate more revenues. That's essentially the problem you'll be solving for a lot of these guys and gals who come onto these reality inventor shows who pitch and get rejected half the time. So here's a way to go ahead and really maximize that level of momentum. Next are IP exchanges. These are sort of online brokerages where you can go ahead and buy and trade intellectual property. So you can check it out um, at IP Nexus. We've also got intellectual property exchange as well. So you can go ahead and check out that type of site on ipexchange.global. And also, you can go on to Upwork. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with outsourcing. So you can go on Upwork.com and search for other great industrial designers or you know mechanical engineers or any types of engineers who are great in, or who are really serious about product development and product design. Just have a look around and you'll be able to find some great talent there as well. And of course, we can go ahead and go to the top industrial design schools. I'm just using US as, as an example because I spend a lot of my time there. So you can go to idsa.org and they're really the association that regulates these great industrial design schools. So you can go to the website, check out the schools that are listed there and you can go ahead and contact the tech transfer division so that you can find great designers and inventors who you can possibly license, sub-license their ideas. You've got a few household names there. You've got Oregon College of Art and Craft. You've got, you know, Carnegie Mellon, etc. I've given you a wide range of places where you can find pretty much inventors. Even if there were a million people who woke up tomorrow and went on these sites to find great inventors, there would still be plenty of potential and hidden intellectual property that is just dying to be transformed into income generating assets. So just like this little guy here says, no excuses, just play like a champion. Step five is we want to go ahead and connect with potential inventors. So what exactly do we say to these potential inventors to be able to actually inspire them to be part of our team? So here's a breakthrough email that I would suggest for you to send to inventors. The first thing you would say in the subject line is potential partnership with big company name. So let's say potential partnership with IBM. Then you say, hi, first name, my client, IBM would like to know if you're open to licensing the design of insert winning product name. Give a quick no thanks or yes interested. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm leveraging the authority and credibility of the big company's brand. So this overrides all of your sort of skepticism about, oh, but what if this inventor won't listen to me because, you know, I've just started in the licensing game. Uh, I'm a nobody. I'm not a Richard Branson or Elon Musk or anything. Well, this template allows for you to be able to really smart cut all of the process. And as you can see, this email is short and sweet. It's not a whole essay about, hey, I want your design. I think you're the greatest in the world. It's none of that. This is just short, sweet, straight to the point. And common responses you'll get when you send this out to inventors are similar to these responses below. So yes, interested, send through your terms. Yes, interested, what's involved? Yes, interested, tell me more. So what on earth do you do once you have those responses? You would go ahead and follow up with a similar template to what I have right here. So you would go ahead and reply back. You would say, thanks for your prompt response name. A sample sub-licensing agreement for the design of insert product name would include but not limited to one allowing me to present your breakthrough design to interested companies who are looking to license it in exchange for generous royalties two a 50 50 remuneration split three exclusivity duration whereby if i cannot cut a deal in six months or less you receive the sub license back no questions asked because your success is my success so if you agree that it is worth talking about and the fit may be there, let's have a follow-up call. Would a call sometime around next Wednesday work? Alternatively, you can book a meeting via my scheduler and insert a link to like your online scheduler. It could be Schedule 1, it could be um, you can book.me, whatever service you want to use. Then what you'll find is when you go ahead and have someone book a meeting with you, so when you have an inventor who jumps on this straight away and says, man, this sounds awesome, too good to be true, and you have a phone call, one earth do you say on the phone call? Here's what you do and what you say. 
You want to initially start the conversation off by setting the frame. How the conversation starts will determine literally how it will flow. So here's how to best commence the conversation. You want to say this. So you want to say, I'm really excited that we can both set aside 30 minutes to talk about how we can help you sub-license product name in exchange for generous royalties from my pet products clients, from my niche clients. Let's begin with a few questions. Firstly, how did you get started in this business? So you want to create some sort of connection, remind them how they actually created their design or their invention to begin with. Then you'll say, secondly, if we were to have this conversation 12 months time, what would have had to happen in order for you to be happy with our progress? So we're future pacing things to let them know we're not here for the short term, we're here for the long term. Thirdly, do you have all the money, manpower or woman power up to you and time you need to achieve this goal? So we're getting clear on the fact that at the end of the day, we need to identify that they do have a problem. If you could pitch your product in one sentence or less, what would it be? What are the benefits and features of your product? And do you have a short demo video of your product? Do you have a patent, provisional or non-provisional? If so, what's the patent number or code? How much does it cost to manufacture each unit? What is a general retail price point slash range? So as you can see, I'm very big on asking the right questions in the right sequence here. And here's how to best end the call once you're able to scoop up all of that awesome invaluable data. You want to say, great, I've got exactly what my client company name, for instance, IBM is looking for. I'll send through a draft sub-licensing agreement and we can take it from there. Sound good? Great. Have a brilliant day ahead and talk soon. Here's the licensing power tip, is that the person who asks the questions controls the outcome. Step six is we're going to go ahead and send a sub-licensing rep agreement to the particular inventor. So we want to make a godfather offer, an offer they cannot refuse, because at the end of the day, they've already done a lot of the hard work in creating their invention or creating their design. So if you can go ahead and tell them, hey, look, I'll handle all the work for you, I'll pitch to the companies for you, you just have to go ahead and sign the sub-licensing agreement and get royalties in exchange for my hard work or our hard work, when do you want to get started? It's an irresistible offer, right? You're not really selling anything, you're just pitching here and presenting. In order to go ahead and put a proposal agreement template together, there's two ways of doing this. You can use like a ready-made type of service with existing templates, which is PandaDoc. The licensing templates are okay, but of course you want to tweak it accordingly to what we're mentioning with throughout this presentation. Second is you can go ahead and import your own existing template into HelloSign so that you can track when they send, when they open the document, etc. And within that sub-licensing agreement, it should always make sure that you include the following components so that you don't shoot yourself in the foot. First part is you want to strictly state that the agreement is to allow you to present to potential licensees. In other words, for you to be able to represent that product, that invention, that design to these big companies who will be willing to license the intellectual property in exchange for royalties. Secondly, you want to have an exclusivity duration so that the inventor or designer doesn't feel like this is like something that happens to be forever and they're locked in. You just want to strictly state to them, look, give me six months to cut a deal. If I cannot cut a deal within the next six months, you get the sub license back, no problems at all. So here we're going ahead and reversing any sort of risk or skepticism on the inventor side. Thirdly, you want to make sure you state the remuneration agreement. So I did mention there'll be 50-50. So for instance, if a big company goes ahead and says, hey, we'll give you 100,000 a year worth of royalties, then you will give half of that, which is 50,000 to the particular inventor and designer. And I know it sounds like a lot, but the thing is at the end of the day, if you are generous and if you can go ahead and really give more than what others are willing to give, it will pay off lifelong dividends and you will automatically differentiate yourself in the marketplace and you will have a never ending amount of deal flow coming your way. Step four is frequency of royalty payment. This is really dependent upon the company that sub licenses the actual intellectual property. So we can't really finalize this just yet, but you want to say it's dependent upon the actual company's structure that ends up licensing the intellectual property. Part five, so request for licensor inventor's payment details so that once you do get the royalties and you get paid first, you immediately deposit those funds or pay them directly into that particular account. So do whatever it takes to get them to say yes. This is an irresistible offer to any inventor who's pretty much locked himself or herself in their basement, designing away and creating awesome gadgets, who 
just want to go ahead and really spend their time creating, not trying to build a massive company, but to be able to just continue doing what they do best, which is being in the creative genius. Pitch them with those main components that I mentioned on the previous slide and get them to say yes and do whatever it takes to be able to create a lifelong relationship. Step seven is we want to extract a pitch deck. So what really a pitch deck is, is a composition of essential slides that tells the story in terms of what you believe is the big idea that can change a person's life. We need to do this before we actually approach the companies so that we've got a strategic tool, a Trojan horse, if you will, that will empower us to be able to inspire the company to understand how serious we are in creating a licensing agreement. Here are a couple of pitch deck solutions I recommend. You can use slidebean.com. It is a paid service, or you can just use Google Slides like what I'm using right now. Um, both are you know, apples to oranges, so see how you go with either of the two. Here's what you need to include in a winning pitch deck. You don't just go ahead and just chuck up anything or just chuck up pictures of the actual invention, product, or design. It needs to be a strategic sequence. And how we actually create a strategic sequence are the following 10 slides. Slide one is mention what the big idea is. So what's that one line benefit statement that when any company reads immediately gets it and immediately says, heck yeah, I want that or wow. Secondly, you want to talk about what's changing. So what are the three market forces that are actually opening up the opportunity to be able to achieve what the big idea is. So in essence, it's supporting the previous slide. So you want to, you want to talk about the economic changes, social changes, and technological changes that are actually advancing the big idea forward. Third slide is you want to talk about the problem. So what significant problem is this particular design solving that nobody else is solving or nobody else is solving to the standard that you are looking to upkeep? Slide four, talking about generic solutions in marketplace. So what are existing alternatives already in the marketplace that really shadow what you're looking to go ahead and pitch to these particular companies? And how are they really, I guess, in the best essence, like, you know, just existing alternatives? They're not really the best alternatives, but existing alternatives. Slide five, we want to talk about your actual solution. And the best way to demonstrate this is to go ahead and have a video of the particular invention. So, for instance, if you've reached out to crowdfunders on Kickstarter Indiegogo and they've already got a demo video there, that's perfect marketing goal that you can actually leverage and put within this particular pitch deck and be able to send it through to the company. Just where in doubt, put a video here. Otherwise, you can always put an image, but nothing works better than a video itself. Slide six is talking about the actual value proposition. So this isn't about how good you believe you are. This is about how good and how much you can help the particular company that you're choosing to send this pitch deck to. Slide seven is the economics. So you want to talk about, okay, what is involved in terms of the potential for gain? So should the company proceed with licensing this particular design or idea, how are they really going to gain from it in terms of the monetary level? Like, will it be able for them to go ahead and halve the cost of the product or double the price of the product and create a premium market? Which one is it? Slide A, you want to go ahead and leverage social proof. So as I mentioned, if you're going ahead and finding smart inventors or designers from Indiegogo or Kickstarter, you want to have numbers such as like existing sales that they've reached on these crowdfunding platforms, product testimonials, media mentions. All of this social proof adds up to be able to create negotiating power for you so that you can have the highest level royalties possible from the company in which you can give more to the inventor itself who will absolutely love you and end up creating more and more designs for you to pitch these particular companies. Slide nine is what I call pricing. So you want to mention that there is an exclusivity, but it's on a first come first serve basis. It's not just available for everyone and that you are talking to other relevant companies within the field. Then the last slide needs to be a strong call to action. So you can't just say, thanks for reading my slide. Have a good day. You need to go ahead and actually tell them what the next step to do is, which is you want to be able to invite them to go ahead and book a meeting with you, which leads to the next step, which is to be able to qualify a potential company. And how we're going to do this is by sending up a breakthrough follow up email. So the subject will be potential breakthrough or could be worth considering question mark just found it or even good news. So these are good subject titles that I've split tested with. They'll all work just as good as each other. So don't feel like you have to stick with just one. Email body will actually be a high name, 
So let's say, hi John, good news, I've just found a breakthrough idea slash design that will help so IBM or pet products company achieve X goal as mentioned in our previous conversation. Here is a link to the overview which is your particular pitch deck so you can put that online um, so that you can track it of course. Then you would follow on to say if you agree that it is worth talking about and the fit may be there, let's have a follow up call. But of course sometime around next Wednesday work. Alternatively, you can book a meeting via my scheduler. Insert the link to your online scheduler there. So here's a licensing power tip. So many of you might say like, oh, what if they go ahead and don't respond back to my email? What do I do? Has the deal died? You know, all these crazy types of thoughts might be running through your mind. But here's a licensing power tip. You can go ahead and direct mail an oversized GIF with a handwritten letter and the actual pitch deck itself in physical print version in order to inspire them to pick up the phone and call you. What do I mean by an oversized GIF? Okay, so your oversized GIF doesn't have to be this big. It could be half the size of this. So essentially, uh, that's a Rubik's Cube there. So you can send through something like a Rubik's Cube as long as it's big enough to the point that they are inspired to actually open up this GIF. Because if you send a small Rubik's Cube, you know, it might not be big enough for them to think it's serious mail. But if it's something big and it's a GIF, they'll have to open it. So you give them pretty much no choice but to go ahead and see what it is you are sending them. So here's the one page handwritten letter template that I'll suggest you using in order to include with this oversized gift or oversized Rubik's Cube. And you'll say, Hi John, I finally found the missing piece to our puzzle. Here it is. So link to the actual URL of the pitch deck online. Let's solve it together and insert your signature with a link to your online scheduler, of course. So short, simple, sweet, but really would ignite the conversation to let them have a good laugh at the fact that you did send them an oversized gift and that they have something to offer so that people can play with. Perhaps the kids want to play with it, they'll play with it. And it just makes them understand that you're a good marketer at the same time. So here's a licensing power tip before you actually have that phone call with the particular company or person that you spoke with. And you want to check the company's websites for existing licensing templates. So this is an absolute gold tip because then you're not really shooting or aiming in the dark. You're getting a good idea of how the business actually operates their licensing agreements and being able to reverse engineering these agreements and adding your terms and conditions on top. Once you go ahead and really do have a breakthrough phone call booked with them to follow up with them to discuss what's required with the next step, you want to go ahead again, set the frame correctly from the get go. So here's what to say. You would say, I'm really excited to talk more about how we can turn this design into dollars for, let's say, Pep's products company. I'm curious, what would inspire you to progress forward with this breakthrough idea or design? And then you want to follow on to ask strategic questions such as, how much sales volume do you anticipate that we can do? Can we do 10,000 units, 100,000 units, 1 million units? What royalty arrangement do you believe is fair? You know, do you work with 5%, 7%? So this is the benefit of looking at previous licensing agreements is that they more often than not will disclose what their general royalty arrangement is. So if it's 10%, you've really hit a gold mine. But generally speaking, very rarely do you go above 7 or even 8% of a royalty deal. It's about 5 to 7. And then you would ask, are you looking for an exclusive or non-exclusive license? If so, did you want an exclusive license on a particular niche, a product category or geographical? So already from this particular type of design or deal, we are able to create multiple permutations within this exclusivity license. So you're not really restricted to just having one company who will license this particular intellectual property. Then you want to include a legal inclusivity. So you want to include a clause where it mentions that if a competitor of the company who is licensing this particular design happens to infringe the license, then the company, should they choose to you know, seek legal action, will go ahead and actually include the lost royalties as a result of the infringement happening. So this is possible, but of course you want to consult law on this, but I include it myself because it's just another safety measure to leverage the big brand team and, and legal team of that particular company themselves. You also want to mention that there are no licensing fees up front, so you're not trying to charge the company you know, 10,000, 50,000 in advance. I know it sounds a bit tempting to do that, but it is the surest way to kill a deal is by asking for big fees up front before the company is actually 
launched a new product range with your design and actually made money from it. Just, just avoid it altogether. We are essentially performing risk reversal here with the companies. However, what I would include is that they agree to pay for any necessary patents. So for instance, if your particular inventor or designer only has a patent within, let's say, North America, but they don't have a patent within, say, Australia or any other countries, then the company will agree to go ahead and cover the cost of that. Also, what is the frequency of your royalty payment schedule? So does this company pay on a monthly basis, three months basis, six months basis? You know, how, how did that actually work? More often than not, you'll find a lot of these companies work on a quarterly royalties sort of payment sort of schedule. So don't be discouraged if three months sounds like a long time because at the end of the day, it's really about having as many companies licensing your designs as possible so that you don't go ahead and really stress out about these cash flow issues. Here's the best way to end the call. You would say, great, I've got exactly what my client, i.e. inventor or designer needs. How about I send through a draft licensing agreement within the next 48 hours and we can take it from there. Sound good? Great. Have a brilliant day ahead and let's talk soon. Step nine, so the final step of the nine step system, we want to send through the licensing agreement to the company, summarizing all the best pointers that we're able to discuss on the phone. As mentioned before, you can use PandaDoc, you can use HelloSign, so either you use existing templates, you consult a lawyer, or you import your existing licensing templates. But whatever you do, use something to be able to track the process so that you know exactly where things are going wrong or where things are bottlenecking. An irresistible licensing agreement should include the following, the anticipated sales volume. So let's say the company said, yeah, well, I believe we can do at least 100,000 units a year. Just mention that within the, the actual agreement. Don't mention the amount of money they're going to make. It will just scare them away. Just mention it in terms of units. Also strictly state the royalty arrangement. So is it 5%, 7%, whatever it is, it's generally of wholesale price. What's the frequency of royalty payments? So of course, it's dependent upon the actual licensee, so the company itself. Okay, so next up is minimum guarantee. So this is an absolute golden tip from the main man himself, Stephen Key, where what we do here is we set a minimum guarantee of royalties that they will pay you within a particular year. Otherwise, they forfeit the actual agreement. So for instance, if we say that we understand that potentially you can pay me, say, 250000 a year, but I'm going to go ahead and set a minimum guarantee of 100000 a year that you will pay me regardless of whether you make less or more than the anticipated sales volume. So in other words, not only does it give you strict confidence that the company will go ahead and pay you something for your level of hard work in facilitating this deal, but it really allows for you to keep the company accountable for the fact that they will commit to being able to bring this product or design to market. So what you want to do is the first year you could say it's you know 100K, then second year you could say okay 200K, third year you want to really go for a big, you want to go ahead and just really add some sense of urgency and let them know that how serious you are. And what you can do is in third year you can really hit them between the eyeballs and say okay minimum guarantee is 500K. So this, in essence, is one of the most important parts of creating a licensing agreement that no one else really talks about. So I spoken, you know, is it exclusive or non-exclusivity within the contract and the legal inclusivity clause, which is about if a competitor infringes the company's license, which we are sub-licensing to the company itself, then they're more than welcome to go ahead and, you know, take legal action against the competitor to include the royalties that they may owe us as well. Also mentioned that there are no licensing fees up front. So however, the company agrees to cover the cost of patents where necessary. Also include your payment details because throughout this whole process of facilitating the licensing deal, you're the connector. So you get paid first before the inventor gets paid. So you want to become the channel that is able to go ahead and control, not control, so, but be able to actually facilitate the deal and facilitate all parties involved. You want to control the flow of the capital in the deal um, so that if anything goes wrong, they can't really just cut you out of it. You also want to state that you have access to the accounting files and potential audits if necessary, if you ever feel like you know there's something just not right. And also an acquisition clause. So this is something a lot of people don't talk about in the field of licensing, which is when you have an acquisition clause, you can value the intellectual property much more than what they believe it's worth. So what I mean by that is, let's say for instance, if the company you're already licensing the technology from believes that the technology is worth about $5 million, 
then you need to state that the value of the intellectual property is actually $5 million plus, not $0 for what the company went along and licensed the intellectual property for before you came into the picture. Don't worry too much about that. I just want to mention that it's quite an advanced type of approach, but I just want to let you know, you never want to underestimate the value of the intellectual property that you'd be going ahead and presenting and pitching to these actual companies. Keep negotiating until you hear yes, because at the end of the day, you're bringing these breakthrough ideas and sourcing them for the companies who are open to open innovation and you're not charging them anything up front. You're just saying, look, let's go ahead and license my design. I want a minimum guarantee, but I want you to go ahead and really take this to market and just absolutely, you know, create a whole field of new customers. So do whatever it takes to win the deal. As you've noticed, this is one of the easiest things to sell. And I'll use the word sell lightly because you're not really selling anything. At the end of the day, you're creating immense value by giving an irresistible offer to the inventor or designer. And then you're presenting those ideas and designs to companies who are absolutely going to love to pay you royalties in exchange for licensing that groundbreaking idea or breakthrough design. I'm sure you're sitting here like, what the heck is going on? It's a lot to digest, so let me summarize things. So again, what we're doing here is you as the connector are going out and sourcing breakthrough ideas, which are then presented to these big companies who are looking to you know, advance through open innovation and looking to license those ideas in exchange for paying you a royalty arrangement. So here's the licensing power tip is do whatever it takes to be able to guard your network as if your life depends on it. Don't take these connections as a joke, okay? Because you are dealing with people's lives and ambitions here. So if you mess around with any person's design or you don't take things serious, you're not going to be in this game for long and you're going to go ahead and really abuse the privilege of being able to help people, inventors, designers with great, brilliant ideas, be able to go ahead and help you be part of your team. Would you like me to personally help you build a million dollar licensing lifestyle business? If so, click the link below or the link in the description. So one more thing. I'm sure you've been wondering along all this way, a big question that's been pressing against your mind, and the most frequently asked question I always get in relation to this business model is, how many deals do I need to win in order to build a million dollar licensing lifestyle business? So let's do some maths. So as mentioned, we spoke about minimum guarantees. So let's say you have a 100K minimum guarantee. You'll need to close about 10 deals per year in order to reach a seven figure level. If you have a minimum guarantee of 150K, it's about seven deals per year. 250K minimum guarantee, only four deals per year. So I'm not guaranteeing that you'll be able to close deals within this range. This is just a rough figure to let you know in terms of what's really possible with this business model. And at the end of the day, would you rather do 10 deals or would you rather try to sell 100,000 products at $10 profit margin each only to find out that half of your money is taken away? And as you can see, this whole business model pretty much is 100% profit because there's not much outlay except for the fact that you're putting in time and effort to create long lasting and remarkable big connections on demand who will be able to go ahead and really help you create a super connected network. So how do you like them apples? You know, I'm sure I've taken a lot of things that you assume about what it takes to build great wealth and a great business in general and flipped it on its head. So what to do next? Don't procrastinate or let any aha moments go to waste or go to your head. So just get started now. But just please be flexible, be committed and understand that not all deals will always go your way. But that's the heart of what it takes to be an entrepreneur or be a connector is that it's all about resilience. It's not about going ahead and seeing how many times you can get hit, but it's about how often can you bounce back from being hit. Just understand, as I said, believe in yourself. Allow for me to also believe in you that all things are possible and that the old ways of doing business don't have to go ahead and really transcend to the new ways of doing business. There's a better way of doing things. And this million dollar licensing lifestyle system is a result of all of that. So would you like me to personally help you build a million dollar licensing lifestyle business? If so, click the link below or the link in the description. So just remember that as Mark Twain once said, the secret of getting ahead is getting started.
a big thank you for going ahead and taking about 90 minutes of your time out of your busy schedule today you know time is the only commodity we can never get back so i hope that just by watching this presentation today you are able to really gain a lot of strategic remarkable insights aha moments that really got you thinking that man there is a better way of doing things. How can we go ahead and change our current level of freedom, our current level of menu of options, and that is through licensing. So please share this video with fellow entrepreneurs who are also looking to build a million dollar licensing lifestyle business or freedom based business that will allow them to live life on their own terms. I really look forward to being able to connect with you very soon. So would you like me to personally help you build a million dollar licensing lifestyle business? If so, click the link below or the link in the description. Alrighty, thanks champions, thanks superstars, thank you future game changers, and I'll look forward to really going ahead and connecting with you very soon. Thanks guys.